it's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day and day two in La Mesa on the Xeriscape. And we are about wrapped up now with planting and boulder staging. We ended up uh, bringing in nine yards of soil and about seven and a half ton of boulder on this little yard. And, <laughs> I know, right? And tomorrow we are going to top dress with Cali Gold and uh, some burgundy and we're going to bring in some rubble now on this zero escape as i said to you yesterday you know it's not a true zero escape in the sense that it's going to rely only on rainwater the client will hand water occasionally so some of these plants like the portalacaria most of the uh, most of the agaves the pacopodium the aloes um the uh Longissimum, you know, they're going to need a little water in the hotter months, but this client is very knowledgeable and she will be able to identify the needs of the plants. From a standpoint of oddness, this road is super narrow and people, as we talked about before, tend to want to pull up, you know, like literally into the yard. So we staged boulders at the client's request in such a way as to really highly discourage people from doing that, uh, which is why those are so close to the curb. Um, also, I staged plants knowing their growth habits. I want this garden to grow symmetrically. I don't want to have to come in in a year and move stuff around. Now, you may not have that luxury of understanding how your plants are going to grow but remember guys they're succulents and you can move them around don't ever worry uh, or hesitate from planting out your gardens with the fear that you're you know the plant might not be in the right spot guaranteed it's going to happen don't worry if it isn't in the right spot it's down the road just dig it up and move it to the right spot i know though so i was able to stage these plants i want things that are going to be lower profile or have slower growing habits more in the front um, than things that have more potential for height in the back now the pacopodium you're probably saying well the pacopodium is going to get tall yeah but not for a really long time and i'm okay with that right there so another thing that we found our boulder situation was a little conky wonkus uh, we had a giant one left over that's really too big for the space and you guys have told me on multiple occasions you've you've written to me in a panic because your boulders were delivered and they were too big so I'm going to show you a little, um, a little hack, a little trick of the trade. When you have a boulder that's too big, just bury it. So Mel's going to show you, yes, he's going to show you how that works. You stage your boulder and then what you do is you just take your topsoil and you move the topsoil all around the boulder uh, as, as high as you want. And what that's going to do basically is create a smoke and mirror and make that boulder look in this case half the size and you can take that soil up just as far as you want um, and cover up just as much of it as you want but now it looks better it looks more proportionate with the others around it so that's my little um, tip of the day for you if your boulders are too big um, just bury them and make them look smaller all right then over here, we had this spot was driving me crazy. I needed something here, but I didn't have the right plant. So uh, Jennifer let us dig up her gorgeous aloe striata out of her back garden. And we're going to plant that right here. So Luke, if you want to go ahead and sink that plant, and look at how, soil. yeah, it, that looks so good. And my, yeah, that's great. Just now, just go ahead and, and backfill that. My idea or my, you know, behind the striata here is with this Aluaudia procera and its potential to get very tall. You know, I didn't want to compete with anything else here. She's got a Yucca Gloriosa that is a fabulous plant, but I just couldn't work it into the design because of its potential to get upwards of six to eight feet tall. There just wasn't the right spot for it. So she's going to work that into 
uh, the backyard somewhere. This Allostriata is the perfect choice. I'm really, really happy with that. Then, you know, to finish the look, you just stage a boulder. Then I'll take, you can, Luke, you can take some soil and, and throw some soil down around the base of that rock. And then all of a sudden it looks a lot more natural, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta plant your rocks, folks. Don't just throw your boulders on top of the ground. Always top, if you will, top dress them with some dirt so they look excavated. We also move stuff around over here. You pulled the alley out of Yeah, room. I moved some stuff around over here too. Um, it was just a little too crowded. I had the Aluaudia way up here with next to the Blue Elf. I had this Joe Hoke up here. So I moved, um, moved these plants down. This was an irrigation box right here too. So we needed to keep this exposed yesterday, which threw me off a little bit. Greg ended up, since they're not ever gonna use the irrigation, he just removed the valves, capped the water source, and we just buried it. Um, so that left me kind of a, an open space. You also switched the, um... Oh, and I switched out the Pacopodium. I put a, um, a variegated Desmediana so right here. Oh, you're right. It was the Bacarnia uh, Recurvata. I moved those. I felt like the Bacarnia was lost back here. And it was also a little too matchy-matchy, you know, pattern-wise with the Dazzlerian Longissimum. They were a little too similar. So I like this a lot better. Oh, yeah. May, may you please move the wheelbarrow? Thank you so much. So, yeah, there it is. A much better home over there. And, you know, these rocks are going to get washed off. They're going to, we're going to put down a couple of inches of top dressing, and then we're going to throw down another element on top of that. So the rocks will get buried even more. What are you doing over here, Mr. Greg? Fixing the sewer line. So the sewer line was so Mickey Mouse. It was up above grade, and then it had a crooked cap on top that didn't fit flush on this, so it was just always ajar. So Greg is fixing it. He cut it. He's resetting this so that it will be below grade, and the sewer, the cap will be also below grade, and it'll just look a heck of a lot better. All right, so... Please uh, keep me posted as far as your questions, uh, concerns. This has been the friendliest, I think the friendliest neighborhood we've ever worked in. I cannot tell you how many people have driven by and been all right on, up, way to man. go, thumbs up, looking great. I mean, it's just been so, so rewarding and so fun. Yeah, people slow down, they go around the block. I've passed out a ton of cards. So, you know, this is just so exciting because this is such a fabulous solution to our desert drought situation here in Southern California. So every time we are able to remove a lawn, an angel truly does get its wings. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with Team DFS on day two in La Mesa. Bye guys.